live from Music City. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of Dow Trading, Dow Theory, and the stock market in real life. I know it's a long title, but it'll be shorter on YouTube. What's going on, traders from around the world? How's everyone doing on this wonderful day, afternoon, night, morning? New Year, Christmas, a holiday, depends on where you're watching this, technically. If you're here live, this is a live webinar. So if you're here live, it is a Thursday evening, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. How's everyone doing? Bob, what's going on, man? How are you? Pleasure to have you here as usual. To the traders watching on YouTube, hello. Hello in there. Don Briggs is here. What's going on, Don? The Electric Hulk. Wow, that sounds, that sounds menacing. I love it. Wes is in the building. What's going on, Wes? How are you? Mike? It's been a while. Randy? Ooh, Rima. Rima's here. What's going on? Ron Buckley. Uh-oh. My boy, Troy Beinhauer. Troy, what's up, man? Hope you're doing good. Wes Rose. Zochi, how are you? Yen, how are you? If you're watching on YouTube, maybe you got this on Twitter. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. You guys absolutely rock. Ron's doing great. Mark's doing great. Rima's doing great. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, my friends. Well, uh, I just want to kind of give you a quick introduction about what this video is, where you might be at, where you might be located. Um, type in a one if you can hear me okay. If you're in the live class, you can hear and see my screen. Just want to make sure. Pretty sure you should be able to hear me great. Fantastic, wonderful. Uh, what we're going to do is for those who might be watching this via the recording or on the website, just want to let you guys know where we are located. So this is actually the intermediate series. I'm sure you probably remember taking the beginning series. So this is trading for beginners. This is the intermediate trading section. And the class that we have right here is the numero uno class number one. That's the class that you're watching right now. Uh, if you're watching it from our website, thanks so much for joining the Real Life Trading Community. If you're watching it from YouTube or through any of the other various blogs that you found this video from, feel free to hop over to our website, www.reallifetrading.com, and go here. All the information is free. You're probably wondering, why is this guy so excited? I'm probably going to get pitched some multi-level marketing pyramid scheme soda that can help me lose tons of weight. No. There's going to be zero sales pitch. Feel free to stay to the entire end of this session. It's going to be almost exactly 60 minutes long. Zero sales pitch, zero scammy, spammy, salesy emails. I'm not going to ask you for money. I'm here to enrich lives. That's the mission of Real Life Trading, to enrich lives, and I hope to do that with you guys today. So, let's get started. The class title really is Dow Theory in Real Life, or specifically, what is Dow Theory? How do we use Dow Theory for trading, and how can it help us become better, more profitable real life trading, uh, real life traders. How can we become more profitable and how can we become more consistent? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to answer as many questions as you guys have. If you have a question, just throw it in the chat pane and, uh, oops, didn't mean to draw that right there. So let me do this. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I don't really teach with PowerPoints. As crazy as that sounds. I, and I do that intentionally. If you're wondering, man, this guy's a little bit lazy. Uh, the reason that I don't teach with PowerPoints is because that's what everyone does, number one. And uh, number two, you don't make money using PowerPoints. You make money trading. And since that's what you guys are here for, that's what you're watching, right? You guys love trading. You love analysis. You love the markets. You love this stuff. So we're going to be teaching just plainly looking at the charts here, asking questions, very visual, very engaging. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Dow theory. What the heck is Dow theory? Well, in the beginning section of real life trading, you might remember class one. I'll bring this over here just in case you need a quick refresher. If it's been a few days, a few hours, maybe a few years since you've been over there. Trading for beginners, the very first class is the why. Why I just simply break down, hey, what, what is real life trading? Who am I? Why are we doing this? Uh, class two is risk, uh, risk management. So key. I made the second class that I ever teach talking about how to protect your profits, how to protect your account, how to keep you from blowing things up. Uh, class three is the tools, right? The brokers, the charting software, things like that. And class four, how to build a trading plan. So really, the first four classes are very basic, obviously. They're for beginners. This class, we're going to be getting into Dow Theory. 
Dow Theory was created by a guy named Charles Dow. And I wish my, my uh, mouse was working. For some reason, it's not. It just depends. It's one of those Bluetooth mouse, mouse for the Mac that just randomly decides when it wants to work and when it doesn't want to work. Charles Dow uh, is the guy's name. And this is, yes, the Dow Jones. Um, Jones was his business partner, and his name is Job, uh, Charles Dow. So Charles Dow is the father, or is often referred to as the father of technical analysis. Technical analysis is exactly what you're seeing right here, right now. Technical analysis is this visual representation of the price. You would think that, oh, people would always have plotted the price of a stock. Not necessarily. They did, but they never got it to a point where they actually drew it out, they drew lines, and they started visually interpreting that data. And um, a lot of statisticians, uh, really Dow did a lot of work with that, um, in that field, but he is often referred to as the father of technical analysis. Much like many of you guys, I'm sure, type in a two if you've ever heard of Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi often referred to as the father of modern, fo modern football, American football at least. So we've all heard of, most of us have heard of Vince Lombardi. Um, you know, it's called the Lombardi Trophy when you win the Super Bowl. So that's kind of a, an equivalent. And they actually were around about the same time, you know, roughly, uh, Vince Lombardi and Charles Dow. So Dow Theory, what he uh, was rationalizing, and really he never called his work a theory. So let's just kind of put that out there. This was really subscribed to from a lot of different people, a lot of different analysts, a lot of different traders. Uh, over time, they kind of put his work and just called it a theory. He never said, hey, this is my theory about how the market works. But really his theory was saying, if I could boil it all down, we're gonna cover the, mo the majority of the most important uh, things he talked about tonight. But he was mentioning that the market is real, that the market is organic that it moves, it ebbs, it flows, it has waves, it has feelings. And why would the market have feelings? Why is the market organic? Why is it this real uh, movement of price? And the answer is, it's because it's people. Troy said, because of peeps. Exactly, it's people. People are making and having and causing a stock to go up and down because we're trading it, we're speculating, we're buying, we're selling. It really is more or less simple economics. And so he was kind of diving into that and he goes, okay, if it is, um, if we have a certain a group of people who feel a certain way about a certain stock that it should perform in a certain way, right? If there's a bunch of people who want the stock, if everyone is demanding that stock, they want that stock, what's it likely going to do? Well, let's talk economics for about 17 seconds. I know this is going to hurt. Let's go back to high school or maybe college, whenever you learned economics, and just talk about really, really the quick basics, supply and demand. If someone's demanding something, the more they demand it, the more, the more, the more, right, the demand, 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 price goes higher because the more people demand it, you raise the price, you make more money. So you get an increase in price. So then it comes to a point where there's a massive supply. Let's say supply went from one to a thousand, right? And there was a lot of people who bought this from one to a thousand, people from all around the world, from one to a thousand. They bought, 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 they demand, demand, demanded, and then it went higher. So now that there's a thousand of these theoretical units or things, there's a lot of them, now people don't really demand them as much. So what do they do? In order to find people to buy these theoretical units, or in high school you might have called them or heard them referred to as cogs. <laughs> you guys remember that? Cogs. If one cog costs $7 and two cogs cost 4 So if you have a bunch of items, this is called a supply. So if you have a supply of things, whatever they are, and you have a demand over here, so I'm doing this with my trackpad. It would be much quicker if I could just write this out with my mouse. So if you have a giant supply of things, in order to get people to demand it again, you lower the price. Supply and demand. The more demand, the higher the price. The more supply, in order to get people to buy, you have to lower the price. That makes sense. And Charles Dow recognized that. He's like, okay, well, if a lot of people are demanding a certain thing, then they're going to feel a certain way. So ladies and gentlemen, let's do a quick question. Again, if you're watching this video, you can put it in the comment section below on YouTube or on our website or you can email me or whatever. Right here, this is the, um, you know what? Let's just do something that you guys will all 
you will all relate to. Give me nine seconds. I'm gonna hop over here to the S&P 500. Uh, so this is the S&P 500, which stands for the Standard and Poor's 500. So it's a collection of 500 stocks. It's an average and it's an index of that. So we're gonna go back to 2009 and we're gonna look at this particular price right here. And this is gonna sound wild, but we're gonna think about this for a second. Back in 2009 on the S&P when the market was tanking, we had one of the worst recessions in modern history. Was there more supply or was there more demand? What do you guys think? Was there more supply or was there more demand? Down, down, and down, 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 and down, 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 and down, down. The answer is demand, actually. The answer is demand. You wouldn't think it because it's at a low level. You're like, well, are you sure? Are you sure there's going to be a lot of demand? Because everyone was selling and people were freaking out and people were worried. Mm, no. No, not necessarily because people realized that the price was low and so they began to demand they wanted shares of these companies. They wanted shares of stocks. And even though you're like, Jared, there's no way that's true. People lost their shirts back in 2008, 2009. The answer is yes. There were a lot of people who unfortunately did, but there were also millions of bankers, mutual funds, hedge funds, uh, retail traders potentially, who recognized that this exact same price when we traded to back in 2003 after the tech bubble, we rallied you know, 100% since then. So they began to demand the price again. Right? Buy low, sell high. So in the red circles was actually a demand area. And what I'm going to circle here in orange was a what? That was a supply area. Exactly. So when you have a lot of people engaged in the market, when you have a lot of people in the index, when you have a lot of people who all have shares, if a thousand people have shares and no one else is buying, what has to happen? In order to get people to buy, you have to begin to lower the price and then people start selling and selling and selling and selling. So you've heard the term buy low, sell high. We've all heard that term. Buy low is buy into demand when other people are demanding it. Or maybe other people are demanding it. Maybe no one out there knows that that's the case. But realistically, I know it sounds simple, but it's easier said than done. I get that. Buy low, sell high. Buy into demand, you sell a supply. And Charles Dow was actually figuring this out. Like he was processing this before charts. Again, guys, this is a long time ago, over 100 years ago. And was just kind of piecing this all together. So what ended up happening is he came up with over six tenets. So what's called tenets. So think of them like principles. These are uh, the core takeaways that he was creating in his analysis. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to talk about two of the most important one, potentially a third one if we get really lucky. So number one, most important, most important. Can anyone remind me what this one is? Some of you guys do know, but if you're watching this very first time, you will be wondering what the heck I mean. Price discounts everything. He realized and noticed that price discounts everything. What do I mean by that? Okay, here's an example. Let's say there's a house in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a five bedroom, four bath house on one acre and it's a million dollars. Who here wants to buy that house? I mean, I, you know, maybe some do, maybe some don't, but some people do, right? Does anybody want to buy this house? I'm not selling it. It's a hypothetical house. <laughs> You're not going to get locked into a contract if you say yes. Nobody. You sure? Justin. All right, we got a buyer. All right, Ashley wants to buy it. I'm thinking about buying it, but some of you are saying yes, some of you are saying no. All right. The exact same house. Five bedroom, four bathroom on an acre in Nashville, Tennessee. $7. Who wants it? Seven bucks. Seven American dollars. All right. So everyone wants it. Boom. You get what I'm saying? Price discounts everything. If the price is right, as Bob Barker would say, if the price is right, 
people will buy. And if the price is right, you know, you've ever heard the term in movies, everything has a price. Right? If you guys ever see that, every, everything has a price. So if you can, um, if you take that in consideration, let's say that you have, I don't know, a childhood memory. You're like, oh, I really like this childhood memory. Memory, you can't sell memories. Uh, like an item, like a, like a signed baseball card, okay? Maybe you have a um, Babe Ruth signed baseball card. You guys all know who Babe Ruth is, the Babe. The Sultan of Swat. The Sultan of Swat. The Colossus of Clout. <laughs> right? Babe Ruth. If you have a baseball signed by Babe Ruth, would you sell it for a million dollars, yes or no? All right, pretty much everyone's saying yes. Boom, there you go. Everything has a price. So Charles Dow realized that the price discounts everything. So if you're looking at that and uh, you're saying, okay, well, what does that really mean? It's the same thing, right? Price discounts everything. It's the way that people feel related to the price of a stock. So when he was noticing that, he said it doesn't matter what the company is doing. It doesn't matter what the company makes. It's all about are people willing to buy or sell this thing. One of the first things when I talk about if I'm at a dinner party or at a, a, as I just said, a dinner party, a drink party, whatever. If I'm around a bunch of people and people are wondering what I do, what do you do? And I start talking about the stock market and we get into it. This happened during Thanksgiving. I knew it was going to happen. I always bring up the stock market. I love the stock market. <laughs> It's got to come up. If you're with me, it's just, you're going to talk about the stock market at some point that day. So we're talking about this, and I was mentioning, I was like, hey, do you guys have any idea what price line is trading for on the open market? Price line, like that, you know, price line negotiator, the William Shatner guy. They were blown away when I said price line is trading for 14, over $1,500 a share. $1,500 one comma five zero zero PCLN price line fifteen hundo <whistles> big deal that's a huge deal then I was like all right so Starbucks imagine what Starbucks is trading at and they're they're all like oh Starbucks must be like I don't know fourteen thousand dollars a share I was like nope Starbucks you know sitting around there fifty eight and they're just kind of blown away so I'm only saying that to bring up, it doesn't matter what the company is, doesn't matter what they do. Honestly, at some point in the day, it doesn't matter how much money they're making. They could be in debt. They could be making zero actual rep, actual profit, like a company called Tesla. Tesla does not make profit. They are in the hole. I think last quarter, they actually were in the green or in the red or in the black, but they're losing money often. Like by the by the tens of millions, but they're worth right now one hundred eighty one dollars and seventy five cents a share. So all I'm getting at is Dow was realizing this. He's like, okay, man, the price discounts everything. So when you're looking at the stock chart, or when you're asking yourself about uh, a stock, what you always have to remember is it's all about price. Price is the key. Price, 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 price. Price is the key. Don't, doesn't matter what the company's doing, what it's not doing. If it's too high, people will sell. And if it's too low, people will buy and vice versa. If it's too high, a lot of people will get excited about buying it, hoping it'll go higher. And if it's too low, some people will get really upset and begin to sell. So it's really a perfect blend of both. So number one, price discounts everything. I'm going to skip another one and I'm going to go to um, number three. The market has three phases, and this is the one that we're going to hang out on the most because this is the one that I truly believe is one of the most impactful things in my trading playbook. So I couldn't think of a better term. <laughs> uh, I couldn't think of this. This is one of the most impactful things I've ever learned in trading. Uh, is that better? I think this is crucial. I use this every day. Every single day, doesn't matter what time frame I'm looking at, I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. This is massively important because when you're looking at this trade, what this will do is it will help you, number one, become a better long term trader. And if you can become a better long term trader, you can also become a better short term trader. The market has three phases. What in the world do I mean? 
Phase number one. It's called accumulation. Phase number two is called public participation. And phase number three is called distribution. Accumulation, public participation, distribution. Let me pause for just a quick second and let you know that unlike school, I'm not really gonna quiz you ever on specifically the names because the names of what I'm about to say are not really important. Okay? The names aren't important. If you came to me and you said, uh, you know, Jeremy, this look right here, this looks like some form of uh, distribution. I wouldn't say, nope, you're totally wrong. <laughs> or if you said, ah, this looks like some form of car oil. First of all, I'd say, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. But number two, I'd be like, well, what do you mean by car oil? You know, I would just ask, I'd ask a question because I'm not just gonna say you're wrong. So just keep in mind that these terms aren't gonna make you profitable or not profitable. What's gonna help you is trying to determine how these are created. And the best way to determine how they are created is to ask yourself, what would you do in these situations? So we're gonna to get to some real life examples. Huh? Huh? Real, real life examples uh, for the next really about 30 minutes. And then if we can get to the third one, we will. If not, it's okay. It'll be in the advanced sections, don't worry. So the market has three phases, accumulation, public participation, distribution. Accumulation happens at the bottom of something. That's the easiest way for me to put it. Accumulation is when the smart money, let me start over. Accumulation is when you guys, let me start over. Accumulation is when real life traders, comma, Warren Buffett starts buying shares of something. Does that help? <laughs> good old Warren, okay? Accumulation, also known as, good job, Wes. You hit the nail on the head. Wes pieced it together. He goes, accumulation, is that also demand? You got it. So accumulation is when people begin to demand a stock. Now, that does not mean that it cannot go lower, okay? But accumulation is simply a phase of a market. Accumulation is when the the big boys, the billionaires, the three comma club start buying shares because they understand something very important. They understand risk and they understand buy low, sell high. If you can get a strong grasp on those two things, and I know this is gonna be a crazy statement, especially to make on the internet, but if you can get a hold and you can really grasp buy low, sell high and risk mitigation, you probably can become, you have a very good chance of becoming a profitable trader. You understand buy low, sell high, and risk management, you're doing, you've are doing. you already got 90% of it down. So accumulation is demand. Accumulation is when people, smart money, start buying. This is a low level, okay? This is after, in all forms of life, in the market, everything, this is after a sell-off has occurred on some time frame. Now again, I mentioned we'll talk about the time frames later. I think we'll be able to squeeze it in. But on some time frame, when after some selling has begun and has taken place, you're going to get a demand area. You're going to get a, an area where people start demanding the stock and accumulation begins. They begin accumulating shares. Gah! Right? Give me these shares. They start accumulating them. Eric said, is this based on fundamentals? Sometimes. Sometimes, but what's it really based on? Read number one, the very first tenets, the very first theory, price discounts everything. So it could be on fundamentals, but usually it's not. Usually it's based on, did I make money here last time? <laughs> right? Did I make money here last time? Letterman said, did you skip tenant two? Yeah, I did. I skipped it for right now. Um, so did I, you know, did I make money here last time? If uh, let's let's do a trivia question. If you bought here in 2003, and you grew your portfolio, your IRA or your individual retirement account by a hundred percent in four years, and you exited right here in 2007, obviously that would have been a great scenario. I don't know if anyone here did that. If you did, I hope you did. Awesome. I did not. 
at all. Not mm-hmm. even close. I think I was uh, I was 12 at that time, so I didn't. I definitely did not. But let's say that you did, and let's say you sold in 2007, and the stock comes back down to that exact same level, and you go, "Huh? What would you do?" You're like, "Well, it worked the first time. Why not do it the second time?" And that's exactly right. People do that all the time. Traders do that. Right? P- people do that all the time. So price discounts everything. So did I make money last time? Cool. Then I'm going to do it again. If you can figure out a way to make money consistently over and over and over and over and over and over and over, you're going to keep doing it over and over and over and over. That's a good thing. So demand is accumulation. It always occurs at a bottom. Number two is public participation. This one is more or less pretty simple to recognize uh, and understand. Public participation is usually when everyone starts getting on. When everybody's piling in. This is when the market is going down or up nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all the drawings off here for a second. I'm going to go back and draw the demand in green. Okay, so here's some demand areas. Here's some accumulation areas. And then I'm going to draw some public participation areas in... Uh, I don't know, let's use purple. Here's one. I mean, really all of that is one. (laughs) It's a big one. Public participation, that one makes sense, right? It's when all the public gets on board. For example, this is a terrible example, but (laughs) type in a three if you've ever seen the movie The Big Lebowski. I'm not saying you have to see it, okay? I'm just, you know. If you have children, it's not, a, it's not a children's movie. It's rated R for restricted audiences. But if you've seen The Big Lebowski, it was a flop in theaters, like a bad one. Like 19 people went to see it. Did not do well. It's a cult classic, exactly. So the demand for the stock, or the demand for the movie was very low. Right? It was very, very low. And then what happened? Slowly, people started talking about it, and then people started calling their friends like, I don't know, dude, you watch this twice. It's pretty funny, man. You know, you're with a bunch of buddies, maybe having a beer or nine, and you're watching the movie, and you're laughing a little bit, and you don't like the Eagles either, you know, and you have a buddy named Donnie, and then just slowly, right? Boop, 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 and then people start watching it, and then bam, and it just starts exploding. That's public participation. That's when the stock starts surging, this is when a lot of um, people who know how to make m- money, this is when they make the most money in these phases. This is the fun time. This is the time where it's like, man, money is so easy in the stock market. I'm loving it. People hop on. People are buying. This is when you hear about it, you know, casually. People are talking about it. It's going on, right? Type in a one if everyone gets public participation. It really is quite easy. Going up or down, public participation. I'll get to the down part in just a second. So that's when everybody hops on. This is the part that you want to be in. You want to be in on this. When it's doing public participation, you want to get in. You want to be in this thing. The third one is the is my favorite, actually. I like this one. Is that scary? Is that bad? I don't know if it's bad. I'll tell you why I like it the most in a second. Number three is distribution. So accumulation is... Demand, distribution must be supply. Yep, distribution is supply. So, distribution. I'm going to draw you some distribution. A distribution phase is when everyone who bought in the green zone, so look at the green zone on your chart that I'm here, that I'm drawing here for you, the demand This is when all of the smart money, let me redo that one. This is when all the real life traders like yourselves and Mr. Warren Buffett, this is when they began distributing all of their shares out to other people. This is the sell high part of the thing I just talked about. Remember, buy low, sell high. This is the sell high. Now, In a distribution phase, the stock does not have to go lower. The stock does not have to crash. We do not have to be in a recession after a distribution phase. A distribution phase and an accumulation phase have 
two very specific indicators and they're not visual indicators. They're news based usually. Ladies and gentlemen, you can live by this. Being a contrarian does work in the stock market. Again, being a contrarian does work. When everybody is talking about this stock, the news, your grandmother, your cousin, that one weird dude from high school you didn't really like very much or some, for some reason he liked you a lot and he was always talking to you and he messaged you on Facebook and was like, hey man, you should buy this stock. You know what I'm talking about? When that happens, when everyone is talking about the news is like, how high can this stock go? Can't go any higher. Pretty sure it's going to go to a million dollars. If you buy right now, you're going to be a millionaire. You guys know what I'm talking about? That's distribution. That's when you need to be concerned. It's going to start going sideways or it's going to pull back a lot. Distribution is a big supply zone that goes sideways or down afterwards. This is usually and most often not the time to buy. So being a contrarian is when everyone says buy, 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 buy. You're going, eh, wait a minute, let me look at the chart and how much has this stock already moved? Like right here on the S&P 500, was that a good time to buy? And the answer is no. You might say, oh, Jeremy, that was, there's no way you would have known. Oh, oh, heavens. <laughs> I don't know about that. We have, we have a few videos approved. That's a terrible time to buy. Like, why, I mean, why would you buy there? It's going straight up. I sounded very Italian when I said that. So that's the distribution phase. Distribution phase is always at a, it's after the stock has made its big move. It's already made a huge move. And again, it comes in different time frames. And it goes sideways. It distributes for a while. Accumulation, obviously, trades sideways as well, but at a bottom. Okay? So, we have accumulation, we have public participation, and we have distribution. We got through the three phases. We're going to be looking at these in just a little bit. Now, I'm going to go to the next tenant. We, I did say I was going to get to it. I hope I did, so here we go. We're going to do, that's one, that's three, and this is five. The market has three trends. The market has three trends. And this is also very important to know. Not as important as the other two, but important to know. The market has three trends. Now, this one can confuse a lot of people um, initially because there's some specific dates that are involved. There's specific time frames that are involved with this. So I'm going to do my absolute best to break it down and make it really, really easy. The market has three trends. Here's three trends. A really long one. <laughs> a really long one. Number two, a shorter one. And number three, a really short one. <laughs> now I know some of you out there who love details. You're gonna be, you're getting annoyed at me right now. And you're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't help at all. Well, you tell me how much is long to you, right? Because this can depend on your perspective, your personality, what you appreciate more. I don't really like details. I'm not a detail guy. It's just how I am. But if you like details, a really long one is more than a year. I believe Dow, Dow said classified at some point three to five year time frame. So I'm just gonna say that verbally. So usually a really long, do you guys think five years is a long time? Does anyone think five years is a long time? I think five years is on, on the verge of forever. By the way, celebrating my three year anniversary today with my girlfriend. She's over there videoing. Hello, girlfriend. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for the congrats. So yeah, that was, so three years. So three years is a long time. So I was, I was telling her today, I was like, I don't know how you put up with me for more than three days, three weeks, or three months. Three three years is a long time for me. So I congratulated her. I was like, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. So Justin said, today is my ninth wedding anniversary. What? We have the same, we have the same anniversary, Linderman? Oh, man. 
<laughs> Did we just become best friends again? Dang. I love it, dude. All right. December 1st. Big day. What random tangent. I know. Love is everywhere. Love you guys. She's behind the camera. You're amazing. <laughs> um, I think three years, five years, it's a long time. Really, really long time. What's shorter than three to five years? You know, one to two. Maybe a few months? What's a really short time frame to me? Minutes, hours, or days. Do you guys get the idea? So there's three trends. If we looked at the, uh, this is the S&P again, and let me zoom out. I know this is gonna be a really, really just blatantly too easy, but if we look at the S&P on this time frame, this is back from 1981. There are some people here right now who were not even born in 1981. Okay? <laughs> There's some people out there. Now there's some people out there who uh, 1981 was like, you know, their glory days. So if we're looking at 1981 and we're looking at this and we're saying, what's the primary trend of the S&P 500 since 1981? The answer would be bullish. Since we're, we're looking at 1981, let me help you guys with this really quickly. The vast majority of the time, every market, every stock, every company that you will look at, the primary trend will be bullish throughout its history. Don't always be a perma bear, be a perma bull. Always look for the discount, right? Don't try to pick the tops. Everyone who tries to pick the tops eventually goes broke. There's a, there's a, I believe Jack Schwager said it. I could be totally wrong, but there's a statement out there that the market will remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So what I mean by that is if you always try to say, oh, let, let me point to you how many times you know, people said the market was going to go down. I mean, there's so many times, but there, I mean, that was the 1987 crash. There, 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 there. And finally they got in bullish and then the market went down, right? And then they tried to call the top again there. You guys get what I'm saying? If you always try to pick the top and try to make the stock go down, you might get it correct once, twice, maybe three times at some point. But overall, just be bullish. Just be bulls long term. Okay, we're all gonna live here for a long time, hopefully. Life is beautiful, life is precious. If you like investing, if you like the stock market, be a bull, okay? I'm just, just be a bullish trader for the long term. Big, three to five years is a long time to me, maybe 30 years is a long time to you guys. Just, does that make sense? Can you guys throw some ones in there? Be a perma bull, just do that for me. You're gonna make more money over the long term, okay? It's just, that's just, the world's not gonna get, the world's not gonna end. It's just okay. If you believe the world's going to end, then money's not going to matter at that point. So you might as well make as much money as you can until the world ends. And once the world ends, all right, good to go. Right? Don't worry about it. You're going to have a good time doing whatever it is you're doing. So be bullish long term. <laughs> Wes says be a purple bull for the really long one. <laughs> yes, exactly. For the really long one, be a purple bull. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't make money bearish because I would never say that. I love making money on the downside. But, okay, you guys get the point. I've driven that one home long enough. A shorter one. All right, so a shorter one, let me just kind of draw some lines. All right, so this would be, uh, these would be shorter trends. Just since I'm looking at the whole giant, you know, S&P right now. So we're looking at decades, literally. These are all shorter term trends. You guys see the different ones? Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. And then you have the shorter term trends. The shorter term trends look a little bit like this. Right, let me do a different color. Let me do black. All right, so there's the short term trends. Boop, 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 boop. It's pretty much each individual move. And you, you, know, you can catch these moves and you can make money from each, but it's, it's each individual move. Now, Keep in mind, I'm looking at a big, 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 big perspective. Okay, this is the huge, I'm not even pulling out all the data that can be pulled on the S&P. There's much more data than 1981. But right now, I'm just looking at all the data. We're putting it all on the screen. When, you ver when the first time ever you look at a company or a stock chart, get all the data that you can. Go as far back as humanly possible or as far back as your charting software will allow. TradingView only pulls back from like 1976. Um, at least until you request more data. But 
it, it's good enough, right? So just go back as far as you possibly can with your charting software. Zoom out, go to a monthly chart or a weekly chart and just zoom out and just get a big perspective of what that company is doing. So let's do that on two or three companies really quick. Uh, I'm gonna save this while I have it and just, just in case we're gonna go somewhere else. Give me three companies, ladies and gentlemen, any company out there, any stock, doesn't matter. All right, so Facebook. So here's Facebook on a weekly chart. I'm just gonna hide all my drawings here. Facebook hasn't been around that long. I do remember the IPO of Facebook. I was working at Nationwide Insurance. That's all the history that Facebook has. So ladies and gentlemen, what's the primary trend of Facebook? Unquestionably, unequivocally, don't care what your opinion is because this is a fact, right? This is a fact. This is a stock market fact. The primary trend on Facebook, regardless of how you like the company or not, is bullish. Now, I know that sounds crazy. Like, Jeremy, how can you say facts about the stock market? It's simple, guys. This is bullish. Look at this. It's going up. That's the primary trend. Now, what's it doing over the last few weeks? Okay, it's going down over the last few weeks. We're right. So this is a shorter time frame. But if you bought in 2013 and you still have shares of Facebook, are you making money? Ah, good to know, Brandon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're making money. So if you bought that. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do, uh, oh, Johnson Johnson will be fun. Johnson and Johnson. So here's a weekly chart of Johnson Johnson. Let's let this data load. So this is a weekly chart of Johnson and Johnson. Hey, I'm Johnson and Johnson. All right, so we're going, we're going way back. We're going back to the to the good old days. We're just good old boys. All right, long term primary trend on Johnson Johnson. Go. Long term, what do we got? Yeah, guys, this is a, again another fact. This is no, there's no opinions here. This is a hundred percent fact. It is bullish. Higher, going up. Primary trend on this time frame. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit farther than Dow. I don't know who else taught, teaches this. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who taught this. Uh, I've done a lot of research. A lot of, I've read a lot of technical analysis books, a lot of Dow theory books, uh, technical analysis of stock trends. I've read a lot of them. I can't remember exactly who start, first started bringing it up, but I don't know specifically. I've never heard anyone mention this before, but here's my take on Dow. Okay, my take on Dow theory is yes, there are three trends but the three trends are dependent on your perspective of the chart that you are looking at. So if you're looking at what I call a max chart, the primary trend is everything from beginning to end. Does that make sense? So from beginning to end, you have the primary trend. That's just my opinion. I'm, again, I'm stretching it a little bit from down. I'm not gonna just take everything he goes and go, oh, okay, this is the Bible and believe everything he says word for word. I'm gonna make it my own. And you guys are welcome to do the same thing. If you're watching this video, you got, you're like, this guy has a giant head and I don't know what the heck he's talking about. Hey, I'm cool with that, right? So take what I'm, what I'm mentioning it and make it your own. Blend it into your own cookie and go eat it. The point is, whatever perspective you're looking at, the primary fit trend is from beginning to end of your chart is the primary trend, okay? From your screen, your perspective, your visual perspective, what can you see? That's the primary trend. So let's do another example. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this chart really quick. I'm just gonna change time frames really fast. All right. So if we were looking at this time frame, so this is not a Dow Tenet theory. This is just kind of, I'm not gonna call it my theory at all. Not even close. This is just something I, I think about sometimes, okay? If you were looking at a different time frame, what is the primary trend of this chart right here? The primary trend of this chart is bearish. Okay? So it's the dependent on your perspective of your chart. So I know my detailed traders might get a little bit annoyed about that, but that's as clear as I can make it. Because again, with all the research that I've done, I really truly firmly believe that uh, if you're looking at, because it, it can depend on your time frame uh, and where you're, where you're looking. Now, that's why I said the very first time you bring up a stock, get a huge idea of what the heck that company is doing. Because in my mind, 
I know this is Johnson & Johnson, and I'm saying to myself, long term, the stock is bullish, no question, unequivocally, primary, bullish. But, boop, now this is actually an hourly time frame that we're looking at right now. So this hourly chart only takes us back to when? This hourly chart that we're looking at right now only takes us back to early August. Okay? Early August, stock is going lower. That's all the data that we have. Obviously, we know Johnson Johnson's been around longer than that, but that's the idea. So let's practice this. You guys ready for this? Here we go. I'm going to draw it in black so I don't give you guys any hints. What phase of the market is this right here? So we've talked about trends and we've talked about phases. So right now we're, we can know for sure the primary trend on this chart that we're looking at right now with this perspective is bearish. So in black, what phase of the market is that? Now again, I'm not, if you don't get the right answer, it's okay. The answer is just mine, Dow, and a few other really giant headed, big nosed nerds, okay? So you, just because if you don't know the number, or the name or the term, it doesn't mean you can't make money trading. But what you, what's important to understand here is what people are thinking. My friends, that's really the key. What are people thinking right here? So the answer in black, the phase, in my opinion, would be called accumulation. Now remember what I said earlier, I said accumulation does not mean that it cannot go lower, but that is where people are buying the stock. And when I mentioned that, I told you that the stock is going to trade lower all the time and go into an accumulation period. Now, a few traders said consolidation. That is correct. It is consolidating. So what's happening here is the people who began to sell, right? It, people begin to consolidate. They begin to buy the stuff. Look at that support resistance. I mean, look at that hold right there. You could have made money just trading that. Would you guys agree? Can you see a very clear support resistance Demand supply zones, I mean, right there, this is an hourly chart. What if all you traded in your entire life was Johnson Johnson? Could you have made money trading this chart? If that's all you traded, you didn't have to think about any other stock in the world. You only trade Johnson Johnson. Yeah, you can make money. Look at this. Check this out. This, is, this stuff's mind-blowing to me sometimes. What if I drew a line right here? I drew a line right there. Let me guys ask you a question that I ask a lot of my coaching students. Who can get this answer correct? And again, if you're watching this from YouTube, feel free to post in the comment section below. It doesn't bug me. Who sold? Who got out? Who went bearish? Who made money on the third arrow, the blue arrow? Who made money? Uh, Steven said smart traders. True. Very true. It's a very specific answer I'm looking for, though. A very specific answer. So I'm, have, I'm trying to have you read my mind through the computer, which I know is tough to do, but I'm trying to have you read my mind. Who made money there? Mm -mm -mm. That was a very specific answer. A lot of you guys are correct. I like how Hugh says real life traders. <laughs> you know it, baby. You know it. We print and paper. Yen says, those who bought a resistance, close. Justin, very close. Um, all right, so here is the answer. The answer is, the people who made money on the third arrow are the same people who made money on the first two arrows. Ah, oh, okay. No, I know. I was like, all right, that's a little bit of a deep question. It's kind of a trick question in a way. Sort of, kind of. Because the answer, I could say the answer is the exact same. Let's do a different color arrow, shall we? Let's do red. And who bought here? And I'm going to do a different color. I'm going to do uh, gray. So who bought here on the gray arrow? Who bought here on the gray arrow? The answer is the exact same people who bought on the red arrows. Why? Because they made money. So what did they do? They did it again. If you make money once, you're going to do money again. Now, did the red arrow traders, let's keep drawing red arrows for a second. Okay, red arrow, red arrow, they kept buying, they kept buying. Did they lose money here on the blue arrow? 
Did they lose money there, yes or no? Yes, they did. Are they up or are they down? They're up. Guys, they bought like five or six times before they lost money. Listen to me when I say, I will easily, and I don't care if I'm playing poker, blackjack, if I'm trading the stock market, I'm doing options, condors, spreads, shares, futures, forex, commodities, pork bellies, or baseball cards, I will make $20 every time, five times in a row, to lose $5 on the sixth time, all day, every day. All week, every week, every month, all the months. My birthday, your birthday, Jesus' birthday. I'm doing it all the time. Does that make sense? So remember I mentioned earlier, right? One of the two biggest things you can get your head around as a trader, as a real life trader, is buy low, sell high, and risk mitigation. We're gonna get into the sell high portion, okay? A little bit later. Now, this is just the intermediate class. This is just intermediate class number one. I know, you're feeling like you're getting all the warms and fuzzies right now. I get it, I love it. So my question to you is, um, if this is the primary trend, what trend would this be? Let me do a different color. If this is the really long one in blue, what trend is this one in red? The trend in red is the intermediate or the middle or the short one. Exactly, that's the shorter one. Now, let me blow your guys' mind. Type in a one if you're ready to get your mind blown. Just a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in to this time frame right there. You guys are ready for this? I'm gonna zoom into the red circle and I'm gonna blow minds. Here we go. I'm gonna come in to a one minute chart. Oh, hold on. I said I was gonna blow your minds. Give me like, give me like 17 seconds to do that. What day is this? November 2nd. Okay. Gonna take some time. Going back in the woods. Gonna take my time. Sorry, I just sing when I, I sing sometimes. And they're they're all terrible songs. They never get better. They're never actually real songs. So what I'm doing right now is I'm selling the data load. All right, November 2nd, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the red circle. This is a five minute chart. So all that you're looking at right now is October 1st through November 14th, type in a seven. If you can see Dow Theory's principles at work right now on the five minute chart. And I'm gonna draw them for you right now. We have a distribution phase. Distribution phase. Okay, let me go to the green. Accumulation phase, accumulation phase accumulation phase uh, oops so there's another distribution phase right here distribution phase I'll oh, check that out look at that isn't that the exact same pattern that we were just looking at a few seconds ago but this time on a five minute time frame and it's still the same stock so I'm gonna ask you guys a question who bought the stock do a different color and you guys are gonna get the answer this time who bought the stock right here at the black arrow answer the same people who bought it at the pink arrow why would they do that because they make money once you can make money twice and when I'm using when I'm trading like this I really truly am using Dow theory in my mind when I'm trading because I'm looking at this trade and I'm gonna say to myself, oh man, okay Newsom, so we got a big distribution phase right here. Okay, if I can look at that and I can say, okay, that's a distribution phase and I can look back and go, this is obviously an accumulation phase. Did I trade this area right here, guys? No, no, I didn't take that trade. I don't even know what, no, okay. There's millions of these opportunities every single day. 
So you got this. I never took that trade. No idea. But I can look back in the past and I can say, oh man, there it is. Here's your public participation phase. Here's your public participation phase. And if I can look at that and I can go, okay, we had an accumulation public participation phase into a, do, into a distribution, into a public participation phase, into a, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> Stop sharing the screen for you guys. So it goes, uh, delete all my lines, shoot. All right, you guys get the idea. Here's your distribution phase right here. And here's a big distribution phase right here. So we have ourselves a public participation phase right here. That means that the stock is likely going to continue lower. So if I know that, what information can I take away on Johnson & Johnson? I can say to myself, okay, I'm looking at this trade. Unequivocally, I know that there is an accumulation phase coming up. How long will it last? I don't know. But will there be an accumulation phase? Absolutely. There will be one. Will I elect to trade it? We'll see. So what I'll do is I'll draw a support line here and I'll see if we get any buyers. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the exact same line that I drew, it's still there. So the question is, ah, oh gosh, this is so beautiful. I get, I get goosebumps. Did we bounce right there? Yeah, we did. Now this is a five minute chart. Could you have made money on that trade? I didn't, okay, for all intents and purposes. I didn't take this trade, it's just an example. I have a lot of trades I can show you that I took though. Millions, thousands, whatever. But it did bounce, it bounced 50 cents in fact. If you had bought a thousand shares, that's $500. Simple as that, boom. Using nothing, literally nothing, other than support resistance and Dow theory. So that's just buying the shares, buying Johnson Johnson shares at 115 and selling Johnson Johnson shares at 115.50. Nothing special, just the easy, simple, basic stock market 101. Buy low, sell high, buy at support, buy into a demand, looking at the Dow theory, understanding it, and going into the fact that, okay, this is also an accumulation phase. And when an accumulation phase breaks down bearish, what happens? You get bearish public participation, which if you know how to make money when the stock market goes down, you can ride that down wave. And again, this works on all or any time frame. Let's go back over here to a weekly chart, ladies and gentlemen. Back to a weekly chart. Let me get my auto scale future back on. And now let's look at this chart and let's work on it. What, th what phase of the market was that right there in green? on the green arrows. Absolutely public participation. Yes, you got it. And what kind of phase was it here in the red arrows? Distribution phases. Yes, absolutely. You got it. So right now on Johnson Johnson, would you buy here at this red arrow or would you perhaps simply wait for it to trade down to this black line and then buy? Yeah. Now you can say, oh, Jeremy, you're just looking at the chart. You just know, you just have experience. No. Remember the two principles I talked about? In the very beginning, I know we're almost done, but in the very beginning, <laughs> Buy low, sell high. Okay, buy low, sell high. So I'm gonna leave you with a few things. Uh, no sales pitch, you can still stay here. It's okay, it's not gonna happen. Um, oops, I don't think I wanted to do that. Um, I'm gonna pull up two things and I just simply wanna show you how Dow Theory, the exact thing I'm teaching you guys tonight, helped me in some of the uh, best trades that I've ever called in my career. I'm just gonna bring up two of them. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna seem like I'm braggadocious. This is just a random stock, truly. I, I've, I can do this on just about anything. 
So notice this particular stock right here. I entitled it, don't be that guy. <laughs> it's a pretty popular term. Don't be that guy. Can we look at this chart and see there's no way we would buy here? I mean, now we can see that now. Why? Because it's in a very, very strong trend. It's in a, a public participation phase. If you can notice a very strong public participation phase and you're not already in, then you got to wait. You've missed it. Wait for the pullback. Buy low, sell high. Yes, it takes patience. Patience is one of the hardest things in trading. It's one of the hardest things about trading. But over a year ago, so notice right here, posted over a year ago, I posted this chart for the world. He's saying, don't be that guy. Don't buy right here. This is not the time to buy. Do you still think people did it? Now, I'm going to say I don't know anyone personally who did this trade, but I can guarantee you with a 100% fiber of my being that there are people who bought right there because why? They got excited. The news, the blogs, the articles, the people, the friends, the employees, the coworkers were telling them, oh man, it's going to go even higher. What? How can you not buy right now? It is screaming. And you're looking at this chart and you're like, yeah, I know, man, I got to get in on this thing. I'm missing out on so much money. I have FOMO, fear of missing out. So while we're trading together, we're like, no, 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 no. Do not buy here. No chance. Could it go higher? Yes. Did it go higher? Yes. <laughs> a little bit for about three days. So man, I miss a lot of money, but then this happens. Boop. <laughs> All right. That's exactly what happened. The stock hemorrhaged. It lost more than 60% of its value in just a few months. You guys get the point? Again, I'm not saying this to impress you. I'm just simply saying that this example, I use pure Dow theory, just looking at the chart and saying, is this a buy low, sell high? Is this a, what kind of phase is this in? It hasn't even had a distribution phase yet. Why would I buy up here? Right? If you're looking to buy something, it's just going straight up. Wait for that distribution phase before you're looking to get in. So then what happened? Well, then the stock traded down and it traded down to these areas way down here. Now, in all honesty, uh, I took a bullish trade right here and got out around here after doing some covered calls and some stuff, blah, 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 blah. I lost a little bit of money. Not a lot, like a normal amount. Good to go, cool, slept at night. Had my shirt, my home, my house, everything's fine, right? Lost a little bit, good to go. Risk mitigation, remember? So then what happened? All right, so here's the second one. Now, I know you're probably thinking, again, I'm just trying to be as transparent in real life as I can. This was seven months ago. Not trying to be braggadocious. I'm just letting you guys know that this, I use Dow Theory. Literally what I'm teaching you guys tonight Tonight, I used this analysis to destroy this thing. Here was my note published back in uh, May. Yeah, May of 2016. Really, so here's my note. Really good support. Tried it once. Remember, just told you guys about that. Tried it once a while ago for a buy low, sell high accumulation phase, and it simply didn't work. It's back down at a really good risk support. Risk reward is nice. Accumulation trade. Accumulation. I was literally saying, oh man, this is where accumulation should happen. Any guesses? Bam. I'm talking hours later after posting this. It just started going wild. Okay? It's a hundred percent gain in a few weeks. A few weeks, three months, whatever. And, and look at what I have on my chart. I'm not making this up. Look at how many lines I have on my chart. Two. I have two perspectives. I have the long-term primary trend. Okay. I have the primary trend and I have a support resistance, a.k.a. a demand zone. How do I know it was a demand zone? Because people bought the stock right here. Did I buy right there? No. No, I did not. Did I buy right there? like Babe Ruth hits homers. It was glorious. Ladies and gentlemen, 
that has been our hour, hour and five minutes. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope this was a beneficial session and less uh, session and lesson. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, do you have any questions while I'm here? Otherwise, I'm just going to simply say thanks so much for being here, um, for either watching it here on YouTube, being here live. Again, at Real Life Trading, our mission is to enrich lives. If you could hop over to our Facebook page and like it, that would be phenomenal. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, at Newsome Nuggets. Uh, if you want to follow me on Trading View, I'll also keep the link uh, to the description in the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube, um, where you can follow me. When I, anytime I post a chart like this, you can have an you'll get it in an email, and you'll get about five of them uh, a week. No, sorry, five a day. I I, I post a lot. So, <laughs> Wes says thanks, Jeremy, and girlfriend. Ah, yes, always, always, always. Brandon says tomorrow? Question mark. What's going on tomorrow? Uh, the next class, so this is class one. Next class are going uh, is going to be next week, three in a row, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9.30 Eastern. I will be emailing you out those links this weekend. Make sure to check your inbox, okay? Uh, if you're watching the recording version of this, this already happened. There'll be another one next time. Anything else you guys need? Uh, Brandon said, thank goodness it's after work. Yes, man, you know it's. You know what, just trying to help out. Just trying to help out. So yeah, other than that, this is our website, uh, reallifetrading.com. Everything on this website is uh, to enrich lives. Again, I keep saying that, that's our mission. That really is our mission. We are changing the trading industry, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people out there are getting helped. People who maybe financially didn't have the money to afford education, um, to learn about the stock market, simply because of the big ticket prices, like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for a program or for a class. It's entirely free, my good friends. We're here to help, we're here to teach, we're here to educate, we're here to entertain. You guys are amazing. I'm gonna see most of you next week. Thank you so much. And until next time, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. You guys rock. See you later.